I'm a vocalist and today I'm going to be talking about how to get a little bit more confident in exploring your own voice. We're going to have a whistle-stop workshop. I often hear musicians of all calibres, even the very starriest professionals, talking about musicians and singers as though they're two very different things. And this really winds me up, so I want to be very clear right from the start. Singers are musicians as well. So having said that, I'm going to say a voice is an instrument as well. Singers are really lucky because our instrument gets given to us for free. We don't have to carry it around, it's a whole lot easier than a harp, say, or a drum kit, and you don't have to buy an extra seat for it on an aeroplane. We get to begin using it from a very early age. We don't have to wait until our hands are big enough to get around it. Now, the trouble with this is, because we rattle around with it in an everyday sense, we don't really think to explore it as an instrument beyond ordering coffee, shouting to our mates across the street, or whispering in someone's ear. But a voice, our voices are amazingly flexible and expressive instruments, intimately connected with our feelings and our emotions and our thought processes. Emotions can be heard in our voices without having to practice for months. It just happens when we focus and prepare in the right way. We know our instruments pretty well already. So what I'm going to talk about here is using what we already know, exploring what might be new and possible, and supporting all of that with good technique. I'm going to take you through some warm-up activities and then give you some pointers in using your voice in different ways. The best thing we can do as singers is to learn our bodies as instruments and our minds as we work with different kinds of music. Whilst our teachers and our music leaders and conductors can direct us in this, it's also fantastic to get to know it for ourselves as growing and exploring musicians. So, how do you start? The main thing about a voice is that it is not just located in your throat. Your whole body is involved in producing sound from breathing techniques, muscle interrelations, and inbuilt resonators. What we need to do is be analytical about how that all works together and what it feels like to do it. So first of all, I'm going to talk about posture. Now we all get barked at about our posture from choir leaders and even mum and dad at the dinner table. But we're going to, the best place to start with your posture is with your feet. Now I want you to stand up and put your feet directly below your shoulders. So they're a little bit apart. And then I want you, if this is my foot on the ground, I want you to roll your instep up just a little bit, little bit. Just roll it up just a little bit. And then realize what that does to your knees. So don't snap your knees backwards, soften your knees up. And then, working up your body, tuck your bottom under just a little bit, not too much, a little bit. And then we get to the spine. Start building your spine, one vertebra on top of the other, so that it's nice and straight. You'll probably be about an inch and a half taller by now. Then on top of your spine, we hang the shoulders, nice and open, like a coat hanger, as though our shoulders were a coat hanger, and then lengthen the back of your neck. It's not putting your chin down, it's just lengthening the back of your neck so that we don't have strain by chinning up to high notes and things like that. So that is your posture. Build it up from the bottom all the way from your feet and a nice long back of your neck. Now I want you to stand there for just a little minute and feel what that feels like. And then break it down, have a little wriggle and do it again. Start from the bottom and build it up again. Spend some time, when you fancy doing a bit of a singing session, 
spend some time just setting it up properly like that and see how that feels. Second thing to talk about here is breath. Now again, breath doesn't just happen here, it doesn't just happen inside our lungs, it happens all the way down low into our pelvises, right down there into the sort of cradle of your pelvis. So I want you to take a nice deep breath in, having done the nice posture, a good breath in, and I want you to envisage putting it all the way down near the bottom of your tummy, all the way down there. I don't want to see shoulders up. I don't want to see people going <gasps> and pulling from the front here. That's awful. So nice and low and keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. The third thing to talk about here are the resonators. Now, if you haven't heard this word before, that means the things in which the sound rings around. So it's inside our mouths. It's actually inside our heads, inside our chests. We can have inbuilt resonators in the smallest places. The first and most obvious resonator is our soft, with our soft palate. So you have your teeth, dental ridge just behind it, and then there's your hard palate at the top of your mouth, and then behind that is the soft palate, which is where it gets itchy when you get hay fever and you can scratch it with your tongue. That bit back there. That's your soft palate. Now that is a fantastically strong muscle, which we spend a lot of time training so that we can make it balloon up and create lots of space inside our mouths. And you can feel it, first of all, when you yawn, so if you do a really big yawn, right inside there, it's really easy to yawn, actually. Um, <laughs> so you can set yourself off yawning and feel it that way. And the other way is um, a sort of intake of breath in surprise. So you can feel the air on the back of it back there. That back there is your soft palate. So when that soft palate is nice and high and balloony, like, like when you see a bouncy castle being blown up and you see it start to balloon up, that's a really good resonator. There are other, other resonators in our chests and you can feel your voice vibrating your body in your chest. We also have resonators behind us here in our kidneys. Uh, and then we have tiny resonators here underneath here in our sinuses. Now this is the reason we have to keep our faces bright. I'm not talking about silly big smiles, but we have to keep our faces alive and bright when we're singing because these resonators will be useful in our tone production. And the last thing to talk about are not real resonators, they're sort of imaginary resonators and they happen when we talk about ballooning the sound out from the back of the head or filling up your head with air like you've been blowing it up uh, or, or else putting a headlight in the middle of your chest and switching that on and when you start sort of imagining those things about your body you're really working with your body well. So you're probably thinking by now yeah yeah let's just get on with it. So here we go. I want you to choose a phrase of a song or a line of a song that has a good shape to it. It's got a bit of a rise and a fall. It's got plenty of notes in it. it doesn't have to be particularly long, but you're going to use it as an exercise. The other thing I'd like you to do is use me um, as an exercise as well, because I want you to stop and start with the pause button as we go through. Try your phrase without doing the nice preparation we spoke of before. So just try singing it with bad preparation, just bleh. try singing it that. Then I want you to try the same phrase again, doing the build up from your feet and getting the posture right, taking a good breath down into the cradle of your pelvis there, down at the bottom of your tummy. Try it again with good preparation and I'll bet it sounds a whole lot different, doesn't it? And it feels a whole lot different as well. Really be aware of that difference. Do it again, try it again. How easy was it the second time, the third time, when you directed your breath in a different way? 
Okay, now try the same phrase, slightly lower in pitch. Just go a couple of notes down on the keyboard or whatever you want to use. Sing it a little bit lower. Now this, hopefully, will feel different because you're using different resonators. Lower in our voices, our chest resonators come into play a whole lot more. The sound colour, we often talk about sound in terms of colour, it changes, it becomes darker, warmer, richer, and you can talk about it in all sorts of different ways like that. How did your breath cope when you sang that phrase a bit lower? Was it harder, easier with your breath? Did you notice that if you had to take a larger breath to get to the end of the phrase? What resonators did you really notice happening? Did you notice the chest? Did you notice perhaps some of your head or even in your sinuses and nose ringing with sound? What happens when you focus that on different muscles? Okay, now try that phrase a little bit higher. Really notice how your body deals with that tension. Break down your stance and build it up again from your feet. Breathe nice and low, keep that low connection with your breath and sing that phrase with a good preparation. Now what muscles did you notice starting to work when you sang a bit higher? Uh, did you notice you were chinning up to some of the top notes? Try not to do that. Remember the nice long back of your neck there. Keep that lengthened. How can you stay relaxed and do the same thing? Take a couple of low, full breaths. Shake your arms out. Try it again. Have a big yawn and try it again. Experiment with how you can make that phrase work all the more efficiently. Or maybe you find it really easy. See how high you can go and still feel really relaxed and comfortable with good posture. The big thing is to feel really analytical about how this feels. Really try and be aware of what your body is feeling and doing and see how you can control it, changing elements so that your sound becomes easy and fullest and the most beautiful you can produce. Let's add some dynamics, louds and softs. We're going to try the same phrase in lots of different dynamics. First of all, I want you to sing it really loud, nice and loud. Take a good breath in and really sing it nice and loud. And then try it singing it really quietly. Now notice how much breath that takes. Notice how it makes these muscles feel right down at the bottom of your tummy. Notice how you need extra tension to sing it really loud, that your chest resonators come into play and things like that. Now let's add dynamics by starting it really loud and then fading away to really, really soft at the end. And then the other way around, starting really, really soft and growing the sound all the way through to the end of the phrase. Try that, really notice where it felt easy, where it felt you had to do a little bit more work to get that crescendo going nicely, where your breath felt easy, where it felt like there was a bit of pressure on it. What can you do? Have a think, what can you do to make that breath easier? Center it lower, bring in more air and take it down low. Let those shoulders stay relaxed, lengthen the black back of your neck. Think back to what we were talking about, the posture and starting at your feet. That will make all this experimenting with dynamics a whole lot easier. Then we're going to try it in different styles and different characters. I want you to sing your phrase as though you were the lead character in a big musical. I want you to sing it as though you were an opera singer. I want you to sing it as though there were a baby asleep in the next room. I want you to sing it as though you were a footballer. I want you to sing it as though you were an old person. I want you to sing it as though you were a belting rock singer. 
I want you to sing it like you are a, a blues singer in a nightclub. I want you to sing it as a singer from a different culture to yours. Go exploring. This is something that's very different around the world. Anything else you can think of, I want you to use your imagination and give yourself lots of ways of exploring the same line of a song, the same phrase in loads of different styles. So what's next? What we've been experimenting with so far has been all about the technical stuff and about how we produce sound. Next, we have to think about expression and emotion and how we put that over to our audience. I want you to choose a favourite song and ask yourself several questions about this song. Doesn't matter what sort of song it is, but a song you really like. First question, why do you like this song? Try to describe to yourself what it is about this song that first attracted you to it. Has it got a great tune? Has it got terrific words? Has it got really strong emotions in it? You, perhaps you really like the performer. You feel the way the person singing that song feels. Has it got a really terrific story? These are all questions that give us more and more information to work with as expressive performers. Then I want you to ask yourself, who is the character that is singing this song? In the story of the song, who is that singer? What are they going through? What are they thinking and feeling? What do they really want? And then the next question is, the third question is, could I put myself in that character's shoes? Perhaps this song you've chosen tells of emotions that you feel as well. Perhaps that's how you get into the song. Perhaps the narrative of the song is similar to elements in your life. Perhaps you recognise how this character is feeling, or perhaps the character's experience is completely different to yours, but it's going to be really interesting to imagine yourself as that person. Perhaps it's just great fun and you jump into it with a huge amount of energy, and then you sing it, and you sing it, and you sing it, and you sing it again. So, there you are. Off you go and be an amazing experimenter and an inventor with your voice, your instrument, that is your whole body. Thank you for being part of this Whistle Stop workshop. I hope you've had fun with all the things we've tried. The more we actually know about our own special instrument, that is ourselves the more interesting work we can create and the more we have to offer other musical friends and colleagues. I wish you all the best of luck.